guys, welcome back. Wanted to do a quick video update. So last week, we pretty much went lower and then expanded flat and pushed right back into this channel trend line, holding its resistance, and we failed, and we dumped lower. So again, I'm still anticipating this channel to hold, but I expect a pretty up-down kind of week into CPI, right? I think we have go lower into Tuesday, and then we push higher, you know, to recover today's high. And then we push lower into this trend line. So that's pretty much my baseline assumption. Obviously, it could do a bunch of scenarios alternatively, right? So scenario number one. Number two is what we could have is we could push higher for a wave two bounce into this trend line before we have a three, four, five. It's also the alternate scenario that I am watching. So those are both the main cases right and if we look at wix we did right we gapped over a very important trend line here that was acting as resistance so yeah we can kind of look on wix for clues like are we gonna stay over this trend line if we do in which case right then i think this scenario of pushing lower and then having bounces and then ultimately dumping to this trend line support before any you know, end of year rally, it seems to be highly probable. However, if we break back into this channel, then it seems more likely that we could do something, right? This is the bull case. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it is something I am monitoring where if we can get over, right? If we can start to get over, you know, 37.30, then we could stand a chance of pushing the 3885. Though I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it, I think we could more likely have a wave two, three, four, five if Wix, you know, kind of dumps below 32. But yeah, I'm kind of watching Wix, right? I'm still of the assumption that again, if I go to the 30 minute chart, you'll be able to see that this is an ABC move, right? In which case we are gonna have one more leg to the downside, right? When we break this low, I was kind of around 3580, I'll kind of get cautious to see if we have some kind of, you know, reflexive bounce, right? Or not, if the selling is going to be deep. So yeah, I am watching Wicks for clues, right? Let's look at the dollar. The dollar is just kind of consolidating, trying to push, you know, to make that new high. If you look at the 10 year, you can see again, just consolidating, pushing to the top of the channel and the wicks obviously we've seen that this is the flag that i was talking about last week we broke out of it and then we broke over the trend line but it is looking pretty weak pre-market right so again this is a very important level if it stays over this then wicks is going to have a hard push in which case the index is going to you know dump fast so that is my again primary expectation but again given the huge amount of data and news coming out this week you have to kind of have to be feeble right and how we we're going to trade this bigger picture i'm still looking for a move down right go to the chart of spy i'm still looking to move down to the bottom of this channel right to tag before i see a sizable rally to lend any bounce is kind of a short in my opinion so yeah that's my take on the broader market with that being said i have a bunch of stocks that i am watching this week again Play it with caution given, given the amount of news. So be feeble, be ready to switch directions. But yeah, first one I am watching is Etsy. It does have a gap to fill at 104, right? So again, this is a pretty small move, right? Break of 110, I'm looking for like a $5 dump for the gap fill. But the chart, I do have this coming down for C wave lower. So it could be a, a setup that is lagging, right? That could catch up with the rest of the market. So that's why I have Etsy on this week's watch list. The next one is DKNG again, another stock, right? Where this is holding a trend line support is very similar to Mara, right? Where you can see this is the channel, it fake broke the channel and then it sold off. So leave for DKNG. I'm looking to see, again, this is a very choppy move, so it's corrective, so that could imply another leg down, so I'm looking for it to, you know, come test the bottom of this channel around 14, so that's why I have DKNG puts on this week's watch list. XLE, very strong, it looks like an ABC move, right, off this trend line support, so I'm kind of seeing if it breaks over this 83 resistance, we go fill this gap at 88 before it comes down lower, so that's the reason I have XLE calls on this week's watch list, right? The next one I have is Netflix. And again, on Netflix, you can see we are on channel support, right? If this support breaks, you 
kind of broken down from a flag so it could make a big move down to 200 so yeah i am watching this trend line support right if that trend line support snaps that could make a good short for netflix right and obviously this is the upper boundary to play calls on but again that's all the way at 246 so it's not really worth discussing right as long as it's in this channel it's just choppy on netflix and the last setup right i have is bins so on pins, right, you can see we're kind of in an ascending flag, right? The best short position would be a break of 23.8 for our move down to like 20.5, right? Fill this gap. Something else I'm also alternatively looking at on pins is you can see it is holding this uptrend, right? So you could see pins try to push to the top of this flag, right? Around 27.15-ish and then again. When it tags the upper channel, it would make a good short position for a move down. So either pins is directly going to break this and dump, or it's going to go tag the top of this channel and then dump. So I am also watching pins to see which way it moves. So yeah, the the watch is pretty short, right? So that's all I just wanted to kind of discuss. And we could kind of look at, you know, Apple and stuff like that. In bigger picture, I am kind of looking for apple to still have you know break this prior low at 137 i'm looking for apple to test around 133 and alternatively also in a more bearish scenario i could see apple right this entire move down was your a your b this is your c wave right apple break its prior low june low at 129 before this a wave is done for apple and we push higher so again the indexes, right? They may not stop selling till Apple breaks this prior low, right? This prior low at 129. So Apple should could be an interesting watch, right? Given that we've looked at Tesla, right? We've looked at Tesla and Tesla is almost, right? It's almost close to breaking its June lows. I would be interested to see that if Tesla breaks its June lows, I think Apple would continue as well. And then Tesla could, you know, target the low 180s. So yeah, it's kind of something I am watching as well. Google, on the other hand, is a lot easier to read, right? Because it's a straightforward channel, broken down flag. So again, Google, I'm still looking for this to come back down to like 93, 91, right? Bottom of this channel before it pushes higher for this B wave. Same for Meta. You can see that on this chart, you can see we're not close to tagging this bottom of the channel. So I would think that Meta comes down to tag the bottom of this channel before it's, you know, kind of done with the A wave. Same for Microsoft, right? Come tag the bottom of this channel around 222 before it's ready to move up for the B wave. So these stocks are a lot more straightforward, right? Stocks like Apple is more confusing on whether this is going to make a B wave, right? around 133 or whether it will break its June lows, but I still see a little more downside in both cases. And Tesla, obviously for fun, I drew like a channel and you can see we're kind of sitting on this channel. So it will be interesting to see what we do with this channel, right? The downturn break is 231. Till it breaks 231, any bounce probably gets rejected lower. So yeah, that's all I wanted to discuss on this week's video. Thank you so much. Have a great day.